All right, Swifter, Jon Snow may know nothing, but you know how to get data from the API of Ice and Fire. When we finished our last video, you had gotten data for the first 50 Game of Thrones houses, decoded the JSON, and populated your table view. In this video, we're going to take the data from any selected table view cell and pass it into a detail view that will show words, region on a map, and coat of arms. So we're currently on section D in our exam review. So first we're gonna add a new view controller to the project and then we're gonna create a show segue from a table view cell to this new view controller. And we're gonna name this segues identifier show detail. On the main storyboard, click on the library, search for view controller, drag it over and plop it on the storyboard. Then I'm gonna control drag from the cell. I'll do it this time from the document outline to make sure that I get the cell. And I'll let go inside of the new view controller and I'll select show segue. Then I'll click on this little ball in the middle of the segue arrow, show the attribute inspector, and set the identifier to show detail. Next, we'll create a new Swift file for this new view controller. We'll call it detailviewcontroller.swift, and we'll do everything necessary for this file to work with a new view controller that we just added to the project. Back in Xcode, I'm going to add this view controller just under my current view controller, so I'll right click on that view controller, select new file. This is going to be a Coco Touch class because I'm subclassing view controller. Make sure that you've set the subclass to be of UI view controller. I've seen a bunch of students not recognize that they had UI page view controller or table view controller or some other subclass in there. We want UI view controller. Name this detail view controller. Click next, click create, and we've got it. And clear out some of the extra comments in here too. Then let's head back to the main storyboard. Click in the dock on your new view controller. Head up to the identity inspector and set the class to detail view controller that new file that you just created. Next up is question four in this section. We're gonna create a user interface with elements and attributes listed below. The names in bold refer to the names that you should use when, when referring to these objects in your interface builder in your Swift code. So those are your IB outlets. And when done, your interface should look roughly like the one at the right when laid out on an iPhone 11 Pro. The placeholder text is there simply to show what the labels and other attributes look like with content in them. You can put whatever text you'd like inside of these lines. We're gonna clear them out in our code before we show our detail view controller on screen anyway. Now we're gonna be using what we learned as the hybrid technique in class, which combines the constraints on one view with auto resizing and all views inside of this view. The reason we do that is it's really quick to be able to set up interface elements using auto resizing while using that outer view to preserve constraints around the safe area. If we use auto resizing alone, we're not gonna pay attention to the safe area and things might look a little off on devices that have a notch versus those that don't. So to set up the subview for this hybrid technique, let's open the library. To search for a view, it's best to type in UI view. We see the view up top. Drag that over, plop it into your new view controller, and let's constrain that to 0, 0, 0, and 0 on all four sides. The little pull-down menus next to the number show that these are going to be constrained to the safe area. That's just what we want. Then add those four constraints. Next up, we're going to hold our name in what will be IB Outlet name label. It's going to be papyrus font, 36 points, 112 points tall, center text alignment, two lines showing. We'll set auto shrink to the minimum font size of 18. So these are all steps that we've done dozens of times before in our earlier videos. We'll click on the library, grab a label, drag it over, stretch the sides to both margins left and right, click the attribute inspector for the label, click on the T to set the font attributes, change system font to custom font, change the font family to papyrus, change the point size to 36. In the size inspector, we'll set the height to 112. Back in the attributes inspector, we'll center this. We'll set the lines to two. Let's nudge this to the top. Set auto shrink to a minimum font size of 18. And let's put some bogus text in here too. How about House Swiftmeister of Apple Park? The next label is the words label. That'll be papyrus style 24 point, 75 point height, center text alignment, set to display three lines. And we'll set auto shrink also to a minimum font size of 18. A lot of this is in our previous label. So we can click on our first name label here, do a command D to duplicate, position it under the label above, set the font attributes to style condensed point size of 24 when how about for placeholder text excellence is not optional those are good words for house swiftmeister and we'll put a note in here that some houses don't have words now over to the size inspector the height should be 75 points back to the attributes inspector set the lines to three 
and the auto shrink was already set from the previous label we duplicated. Now let's add the static text label. It says region, so we'll click on the library, drag over a label, position it in the upper left just underneath the previous label, put in the text as region colon, set the font to family gill sans, and the style to bold. And I can left justify this alignment. Up next, the region label with papyrus font, regular style, 24 points, 42 points height, auto shrink set, and left justified. A lot of those attributes are similar to what I have in Word, so I'm going to click on Words, Command D to duplicate, position this along the right margin of the view, shrink the left side of the label so that's just to the right of the region label, change the font attribute to style regular, it was condensed, set the alignment to left justified, go to the size inspector, height should be 42 points, and set the lines down to one. Little adjustment on the left, and I'll put in the region as Chestnut Hill, which is where Boston College is. A little bit of trivia for our visitors from abroad. They say that there are two lies about Boston College and they're both in the name. It is not in Boston, it's in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, which is just over the border. The football stadium is in Boston, and it's not a college. It is indeed one of the world's most elite universities, and it's quite a pleasure to teach there and to teach brilliant students. Come visit, stop by, say hi, catch a game. All right, back to the test. We need a region image view that's going to hold our map. We need a coat of arms label. This is a static text label. Gil Sands bold 17 left justified. And we need a coat of arms text view. Papyrus style condensed 17 points. And we want to set the behavior so that we deselect editable and selectable. And we set the indicator so that only the vertical indicators, not the horizontal show. Make it left justified too. So open the library, find and drag over an image view, plop it in your view controller, resize it to leave some room for the coat of arms information down below. I'm going to highlight both of these region labels and command D to duplicate them, then drag them below to start my coat of arms info. Actually, the coat of arms detail is going to be in a text view, so I should delete this one that says Chestnut Hill, and I'll change the text that says region to coat of arms, open the library, find and drag over a text view, position it just below that coat of arms label, drag it margin to margin, and have it touch the bottom of the safe area. I'll replace the Lauren Ipsum text with, note, some houses don't have coat of arms descriptions either. I'll set the font to custom font, papyrus, regular 17 I'll keep, and I can set auto resizing on some of these interface elements. And so first I'll click on my house name label, and in the size inspector, auto resizing should have the top left and right outer lines clicked in red, and also select the interior horizontal line. Do the exact same for the words label. The static text for region is already set perfectly, with default auto resizing anchoring in the top and left. Set the chestnut hill label top, left, and right, as well as the horizontal interior line. For the image, let's do top, left, right and both the horizontal and vertical interior lines let's just see quickly how these things look on a max sized iPhone and on the smallest iPhone auto resizing is looking good we still got to do the coat of arms label and text view I'll head back to iPhone 11 hmm I'm not sure why these are positioning off the bottom of the screen let me just drag them both up the text view is a little tough to select so I'm going to select it over in the dock there now I can drag it then I'll click coat of arms and resize it so that the right side and the bottom are touching the margins by the safe area then I'll click this coat of arms static text and anchor that label to the left and bottom using auto resizing and I'll anchor the coat of arms text view to the left right bottom with the horizontal line also selected in the center let's see let's select the view as to resize to the iPhone SE. Not quite there. I think it's the image view I've got to fix. So I'll view as again on iPhone 11 Pro. Then I'll click on the image view and I'm gonna select all of the red lines. Remember, you can slide your cursor over to the animation on the right side of the auto resizing. It'll show you how things should resize. And now when I click on SE, everything looks like it's resizing perfectly in our hybrid setup. Click on max, the max size looks perfect as well. And I'll head back to continue to design on an iPhone 11. Now back in the attributes inspector I'll put in a bogus map in here just to see what one looks like I'll select iron islands doesn't matter I'm gonna override this with some code inside of my app but I'm just wondering what it'll look like looks good then let's get into the assistant editor mode I'll click on detail view controller dot swift option click on main storyboard and control drag over from all of these elements that I want to create outlets for first the name label it's lower camel case the exam gave the names of how to refer to these things in your code so those are the IB outlet names the next one is words label then region label 
region image view, and coat of arms text view. I almost forgot, down in our text view, we wanna make sure that we deselect editable and selectable for our behavior, and further down in the scroll view attribute, deselect show horizontal indicator. Now back in our exam, we're on part E, and in house detail view controller, we've gotta create a new variable named house info that's of the type struct house info. This is gonna be our variable that's gonna catch the individual house info items that we're passing over from our array in the table view. So head back to Xcode, go into detailviewcontroller.swift, and we'll create that variable var house info colon upper camel case house info exclamation point. Next up in viewcontroller.swift, we need to write code to pass data from the selected table view cell into the house info property that we just created in house detail view controller, and we do that of course using prepare for segue. So in the project navigator, head over to viewcontroller.swift. We'll put our prepare for segue just underneath our view did load. So I can just start to type prepare and prepare for segue is an Apple defined function. So I'll find it in code completion, select it and press return. Now the first thing I typically do is I verify the segue that's taking place. So I'll say if segue.identifier equals equals and I'll pass in the string of the segue identifier, add your curlies. Now this app actually only has one segue coming out of the view control so I really don't even need this if statement here, but it's good practice to keep it in, especially if you return to this app and you add more segues in the future. I want to make sure that I know what string I put in for the segue identifier, so I'm going to return to the main storyboard, click on the little ball in between this segue going from the table view to my detail view controller, and I can see it's show detail up here. I'll highlight it, copy it with a command C, head back to viewcontroller.swift, and paste it in between the double quotes. Then in between the curlies, it's the same code that we've always used in our prepare for segues from a table view to a detail view controller. We'll say let destination equals segue dot destination as exclamation point. This is where we subclass to the view controller we're segueing to. This one's called a detail view controller. On the next line, we want to get the index path that the user clicked on when they clicked on a table view cell. So we say let selected index path equals table view dot index path for selected row. It's okay to force unwrap this because this segue will only happen if somebody's actually clicked on a cell, so we'll never get nil. So make sure you add that exclamation point at the end. Then in the next line, we'll say destination.houseinfo equals houses.housearray, open bracket, selected index path dot row, close bracket. Let's option click on the house info in destination dot house info, and we can see that this is indeed of type house info. Now let's click on houses dot house array, and we see that is an array of house info. So we're definitely getting an element of our array of house info that's in the table view, and we're passing all of that data inside the house info element that was selected into the destination's house info variable. Next exam question in house detail view controller.swift, update the user interface to show the properties of the house info data that was just passed over from the selected table view cell. Now, normally when I pass data over, I do a check to make sure that the value that was passed over isn't nil. And if it is nil, I initialize it. This should never happen, but we'll put that in anyway, just as a reminder. And we do this by saying if house info equals equals nil, open and close curlies. And in the middle, we say house info equals, and then we'll initialize it with upper camel case house info, open parentheses, and since we didn't initialize these values in the struct, we get a house info initializer with all of the property names. We'll just put in empty strings for name, region, coat of arms, and words. Now we need to update all of our user interface objects. So to keep our code clean, why don't we write a function func update user interface. We won't pass any parameters in, but open and close curlies. We'll call that from within view did load. And then inside this new function, we can put all of our UI updates. And the code to set up our user interface elements is name label.txt equals house info.name, words label.txt equals, and for now I'll put in house info.words, but I'll put in a to do comment afterward to remind me to fix the quotes because I've got to put quotation marks around this, but no quotes if the house doesn't have any words. For region label.txt, I'll set that equal to house info.region. And for region image view, we want to set the dot image parameter equal to UI image open bracket, select the option with named, and remember what we want to use in here. If we go and take a look inside of our assets catalog, we can see all of these different images of the different regions have the same name as the regions themselves. And you can verify that if you want by perusing the JSON, but that's what I did before setting up this test. So we can just pass in here as our string, also house info dot region. That's a text value, but that will be used to grab the image with that name in our assets catalog. 
Finally, don't forget about the coat of arms, so we'll say coat of arms text view dot text equals house info dot coat of arms. Some houses do have coat of arms, others don't. So question five says if a house does not have a coat of arms description, that would mean house info dot coat of arms is an empty string. Then hide the static text label that says coat of arms. Also be sure that you're showing the static text label coat of arms if there is something other than an empty string inside the coat of arms property. And in order to do this, we need to create an IB outlet for that coat of arms static text label and we'll call that coat of arms label. So while I'm in detail view controller, I'll option click on main storyboard, get into assistant editor mode, then control drag over from the static text label that says coat of arms, add another IB outlet, and I'll call this coat of arms label. Then we can click out of the main storyboard so we're back in the full text editor. And the code we need to write is just if coat of arms text view dot text equals equals empty string. And then in between the curlies, coat of arms label dot is hidden equals true. And this last bit of interface polish is in question six. So if a house does have words, meaning house info dot words contains something other than the empty string, then surround this phrase with double quotes. But if a house doesn't have words, then the label should be entirely empty. You might wonder, but how do I write a double quote inside of the double quotes of a string? And the answer is use an escape character. Put a slash in front of the quote you want to print, escape character style like this. Double quote slash double quote, double quote. So the double quotes on the end represent the text string. The slash double quote represents the individual double quote that will be inside of this string. So back in my code, I'm about to fix the quote so I can get rid of this to do comment. Then just above this line, I'll say if words label dot text does not equal double quote, open and close curlies. And if that's the case, what I want to do is I want to surround words label dot text with double quotes. Then I'm going to cut out words label dot text equals house info dot words. I'm going to paste it above the if statement. This way, if house info dot words is an empty string, we've already set words label dot text to the empty string and we can leave it. Otherwise, this if statement will execute inside the curlies. That means there's words in there, a house motto. That means I need to put it inside of double quotes. And I could just as easily have said house info dot words instead of words label dot text. Then I'll paste in words label dot text equals house info dot words, highlight and cut out house info dot words because I'm going to reuse this, put in my double quote, double quote in here, which will be my string inside, put in a slash double quote, which is the very first double quote that's inside my string. Then I'll do a string interpolation, which is another slash open and close parens, paste my house info dot words in between the parens. Then just before this last double quote, I'm going to do slash double quote, which will be the closing double quote which is going to appear in my words label dot text. Winter is coming. I think your app is coming if we build and run. Let's take a look. Moment of truth. Let's click on House Appleton. Oh, they have no words, so we don't see any words in there and no double quotes. Let's click on House Ambrose. Ooh, they do have words. Never resting. And look at how never resting is surrounded in double quotes. There's your escape character in action. Baelish of Harren Hall. No words. No double quotes. But House Aaron of the Eerie, they've got as high as honor, surrounded in double quotes. Looking good. Let's hop through a few others in here to see if we can find one that doesn't have any coat of arms to show that the coat of arms text label is disappearing. And here, House Brownhill, those guys don't have any words and they don't have any coat of arms. And look, our coat of arms label goes away. Perfect work, Swifter. I hope you're feeling prepped up for the exam. We'll stop this video here, and the next one will cover some animation and sound. Keep at it.